What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Regrowth. Oh, yeah, guys. So last episode, yeah, guys, we fought the Guardian of Gaia. And we succeeded. We did it after two failures. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, like I said before, I've only ever fought that that boss while I was wearing super overpowered armor that, like, negated all negative effects like the Draconic Evolution armor. And I've never fought it without that kind of armor. So, yeah, I was having a rough time doing it with the diamond, and then eventually we succeeded with the terror steel, but still barely. It wasn't, like, an easy fight, right? Um, so I was going through the quest book just a moment ago, and I was going through the Batania section, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. That's where we completed this. Where I clicked on here, it's like, oh, that's where we made this armor. And I was reading the quest. It says the info the elves added to the Lexica Batania referenced a guardian of Gaia, a powerful creature which may prove difficult in battle. It was. Uh, though one which is worthwhile, uh, the lore seems to suggest that the creature carries a spirit of Gaia with it, a material used for the more, most powerful botanical magics. Uh, it says fighting the guardian with your current equipment would be folly. Elementium pulses with elven magics and seems to be a great choice for arming yourself with. So the quest book here, the mod pack author suggests that we use the elementium armor. Mm-hmm. So I was looking at this, uh, we got this a while ago, we saw how fabulous it looked, <laughs> and we're like, okay, that's cool, we're never going to wear this again. Well, I mean, if it works good against the the boss, I think we're going to try it out one more time. Yeah, I like to, to try and find him once again, see if we have uh, great success, see if it's easier, see if it's harder, no difference, whatever. Uh, see if this armor is actually worthwhile. So, uh, next step we need to do, we'll just, nope, not that, uh, I need to actually... Uh, do you want to do those? Do you want to do those? Then we can put them on the plate. There we go. Boop, boop, boop. Back away before you pick them up. Come on, do it. All right, so we got one more ingot. We're going to head over here. Uh, I'm a little prepared. A little bit. <laughs> Not really. In fact, I probably shouldn't have my jetpack or my Terra Steel armor on me, but we're just going to go for it. We're going to try this once again. Uh, yeah, I do have this potion right here. Let's go ahead and take the effects on this one. Um, Yeah, hopefully this works out pretty good. We're just going to do this again. I'll probably fast forward through the fight if there's nothing interesting that's happening, but there we go. Yeah, not so much easier. So anyway, guys, the reason why that armor I thought was going to be a little bit better is if we look at it, it does say um, it has chance for pixies to apply potion effects. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe we'll get uh, strength or maybe it'll give us healing or maybe this or that. The Terra Steel armor we're using just as passive mana generation on mana tablets, which is pretty cool. It also will give us regeneration if hunger isn't topped off. So we'll always get a little bit of regeneration. So, I mean, that's pretty cool too, but... Yeah, if the armor isn't going to prevent me from taking large amounts of damage from that pink stuff uh, and the wither effect and all of that, then it really isn't going to help us out too much as far as I can tell. Now, you guys are also saying that we could enchant the armor, so that might be something we look at doing. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what enchants we'd want on there, but anyway, that's just another thing. All right, so I got one more gravestone. <laughs> Does it, the book says how many times we've died, right? Let's check this out. Uh, you currently died 10 times. Yeah. A lot of times that we've died to those stupid, the guardian over there. Keep wasting mana on that Terra Steel. Okay. So let's see. Um, uh, I wanted to, whoops. I wanted to go back into the Batania section here. That was number three. Uh, another quest that we had available is I believe I can fly. So this one wanted us to make the Flugel Tierra. Is that how you say it? I'm not actually sure. Anyway, it says you're sick of being stuck on the ground without maneuverability to the flight offers that flight offers probably. Uh, however, with your <laughs> newly acquired spirits of Gaia, you should be able to craft the tiara that can quite literally give you wings. Wee! <laughs> While the flugo tiara does not let you hover eternally, it does aid your mobility and allow you to dash and glide through the air. That sounds pretty awesome. Uh, you may even be able to extend your airtime with some lost relic further down. The line. So one thing I haven't liked so far about this mod pack is the jetpack options. So this jetpack that we're using right now is from Mechanism, right? We can go up pretty quickly. And I think it gives us a little bit of a, 
a little bit of a feather falling effect if we fall down with it. But yeah, like if we put this in the hover mode and we try and go, like literally I can sprint faster than this. I mean, I guess it's kind of cool if I need to look at something, mess around with something at a level, but for maneuverability and for actually moving around, no, not good. So uh, I was, I've been interested in making like one of these tiaras. So let's go ahead and do that. So we already have a bottle of Ender Air. I think we got that a while ago when we went to the end. We have Feathers, we have Elementium from previous, and we have these Gaia Spears. Yeah, we have 12 of those. So we should be able to do this. Let's just go and craft it up. Now there are different versions of that Tierra. One that'll give you wings, uh, one winged angel. That's a Final Fantasy VII reference, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Ice Fairy, Phoenix, Lord of the Pit, Black Snow Princess, Sylph, and Mega Ultra Chicken. I have no idea what these other ones look like, and it looks like once you craft into like one of these specific versions, there is no way to uncraft it. It looks like you can turn it... Oh, maybe putting it back with regular nether quartz will do that. No, that's Flujol. I don't think there's a way to turn it back without the wings. There might be. There might be. Anyway, we're crafting this. I'm probably just going to leave it without the wings for now. Let's put this in our bobble slot. There we go. So now it shows that we have feathers. Let's take off our armored jetpack. Uh, double tap. Oh my goodness. Okay, this is like so much better. That speed though. Yeah, yeah, I like this a lot more. So if we land, how long does it take for that to recharge? All right, it's slowly coming back. I guess that is using my mana. My mana ring, is that what it's using to recharge, maybe? Or is it bobble? Can I go to the bobble slot, please? Is it using this? It might be using some of that to recharge it. I'm not sure how that all works. Ah, uh, yeah, unfortunately, Batania doesn't really give you any numbers, so you can't tell if it's using any of the mana or not. But yes, this is uh, something I've been looking for for a while now. <laughs> Being able to move around so much faster... Yeah, while gliding. I mean, we don't need to hover indefinitely. That's never been a thing that we've needed to do. So this is great. All right. And we can also replace our chest slot with an actual piece of armor. So we got a double tap. And then I'm not sure. At what point can I do the control to move forward? Do I have to do shift? Oh, you have to press shift and then do it. Okay, let's see how this works. It's shift and then control. Shift, control. Okay, that's kind of cool. All right, I like it, I like it. All right, yeah, I think we're gonna use that from now on, goodbye armor jetpack. Not only that, uh, while I'm flying, it doesn't make that stupid whatever that sound is that the jetpack makes. All right, I'm good with this. All right, guys, so I was kind of looking at the uh, the quest book, what are the quests we have? We have a few more over here in this battalion section. I think we should just knock out as many of these as we can. I'm kind of scared about this one though. <laughs> uh, anyway, this quest right here, I believe I can fly. Uh, the reward is going to be a greater band of mana. So that'll replace our current mana ring. And I guess this will just last a lot longer. That's my guess anyway. So yeah, that's kind of cool. This holds about the same amount, I think, as a mana tablet. I'm not sure how much this one holds. But anyway, I think we're going to be good with that. We'll just put that band of mana away. Um, also... I have two bands of mana. I'm not sure what happened at some point when I died to the Gaia of Guardian before. The Guardian of Gaia. <laughs> uh, when I died to that and I used the and I like broke the gravestone, somehow my band of mana got duplicated. So I have two of these. Anyway, we're not gonna be using those anymore, so it doesn't really matter. Just thought I'd tell you guys about that. Okay, so this is all done. Uh joining the Ivy League incense or incense. This is another one people are saying that we should look at because the incense is like a potion effect, gives you an AOE. So as long as that's on the ground, like if you're within the range of that, you'll get that potion effect, similar to like a beacon, I guess. Uh, I guess just smaller range. Anyway, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. So this says, smells like power. The concept of a potion is all well and good, but when it's something like speed, you're not necessarily gonna wanna keep swigging potions moving around your base. If you could somehow diffuse the effects through the air, you may be more inclined to use such effects. Perhaps burning a potion-soaked stick of incense will do the trick. First, you'll need something to hold the burning incense safely and an incense stick ready to be soaked in potions. So this wants us to make an incense plate, an incense stick. 
So the incense plate, I assume this is going to be pretty easy stuff. Yeah, living wood and living wood slabs. Can we make that already? I don't know if we've ever made living wood slabs. Like, it doesn't look like it. All right, so let's make living wood slab. And then we will make the incense plate. There we go. I guess I have to make more living wood. Yeah, it looks like we're pretty much out of that stuff. All right, and then an incense stick is, oh, a gas tier, blaze powder, and living wood twig. So... I wonder, are these reusable? 90 minutes, okay. Wow, 360 minutes. Okay, okay. So, if the sticks are reusable, oh, you know what, we have gas essence, right? So we can always grow, we can always get more gas tiers. Is it eight? Nine? I'm not sure how to do this. <laughs> Uh, uses on this stuff will... Okay, so you have to do it in this way. Of course, I would never figure that one out. So that gives us six gas tiers. Okay, that's no problem. So we should be able to do this. Let's just go ahead and make one of those. Oh, we need the living wood twig. Oh my goodness, and we're out of living wood. All right, let me go craft that up real quick. All right, guys, here we go. Incense stick done. Yeah, you know, I farmed up a whole lot of spruce wood previously so we could make all these fences. I was talking about that last episode. Yeah, I've gone through pretty much all of that wood again. Uh, like, I farmed up just enough to get all those fences done, and now we're pretty much down to nothing once again. Yep. So anyway, uh, we have the incense stick. We have the incense holder. Uh, let's see what the next part of the quest says. Ah, here it goes. Detection task. He wants us to make an incense stick, this green one. Uh, so I don't know how to make that. Is it just any of these? Does it have to be jump boost? I really don't want to do jump boost. Uh, so botanical brewery. Let's see. I don't know how this works. It does not say here. Probably we need to go to the Lexica Botania and we should figure out how that works. Cause I have never done incense before. Uh, incense, brew incenses. Here we go. Brews can provide a great variety of effects when in liquid form. They however, don't last long and take up inventory space. Utilizing incense sticks instead of flasks mitigates that problem. These can be infused with bruise effects just like normal flasks would, but take around 10 times as much mana to do so. Okay. Um, uh-huh, uh-huh. Does it say how to craft it? We did that. We did that. So do I just craft a potion with this on the thing instead? Aha. Uh -huh. Looks like that's how that works. That goes right into the middle, right where the flask would go. Um... Now, do I have to create the green one? Does it have to be jump boost? Do I really have to do this? All right, we're going to do this. Uh, carrot, feather, and nether wart. <laughs> I'll stop complaining about it and just do it. Uh, so feather. Yeah, we got plenty of feathers. We have a ridiculous amount of carrots. Uh, I've made a bunch more of these golden carrots, by the way, guys. Um, I filled up these dispensers. So, yeah, we have a lot of mana waiting to happen here now. Um, since we have pretty much unlimited gold, we have all of this gold essence. I've got, I've kind of gotten to the point now where I'm just smelting the ore directly. I'm not even bothered doubling it and then smelting the dust. It doesn't matter. We're just collecting this stuff like all the time, right? So that's not a big deal. Anyway, uh, we need another wart. Grab one of those and we can just drop that on our brewer thingy. Botanical brewery. There we go. That's all we got to do. So I've never done one of those incense before. I assume this is exactly how this works. Since it's going to take 10 times as long. So it's probably going to take about 45 seconds to a minute. So I'll be right back, guys. All right. So I was just sitting here watching the thing and I saw a bunch of particles coming off of it. Then all of a sudden it was done. <laughs> yep. And it went right into my inventory because we have the, uh, the magnet on. So anyway, uh, we got this done. So it looks like that is what we needed to do to complete this quest. That's going to give us another incense stick, which is pretty cool, and more reputation. Let's go and claim that reward. All right, guys. Well, I have never used these incense sticks before, pretty pretty apparently. Uh, Brew of Vanity's Emptiness. I don't know what this one is. Is that good? I'll have to look up what that effect is. Uh, but anyway, I've never used these insects, incense sticks before. So let's try setting one down. I'm never going to use the jump potion. 
But let's set it down over here. Let's just kind of see what it looks like, what it does. Do I have to do anything special to it? Is it just working? Do I have jump boost? I don't see anything. Do I have to like shift right click? Right click it. Uh, maybe it would say in the Lexica Batania still. Uh, let's go back here. Type to search. So brew incenses. Uh, do we need mana nearby for these things to work? By right clicking on it, simply click it with a flint and steel. We'll light it up. Okay, well I did miss that before, so let's go ahead and grab ourselves a flint and steel. I assume that's a one-time use. I don't think you can like put it out like you can with incense in real life or whatever. Uh, but we'll go ahead and figure this out. Since that is jump boost and I don't really care about it, we'll, I'm perfectly fine testing it over here. I am curious what that Void's emptiness one is, or Vanity's emptiness. All right, let's click this, right click. All right, well that's jump boost. So how far away does this thing work? Let's try coming over here. Yeah, that that's quite a distance away actually. It's still giving us jump boost all the way over here. Wow. Okay, uh, so can I pick the incense back up? Right click it, nope, can't do anything. I think it's just there now. So you could shift right click it before you lit it, but you can't do anything with it now that it's there. So if I break this, yeah, but just get the plate back, no incense stick. So that's a one-time use item. That's fine. It looks like the distance that that works is quite far. So yeah, that's definitely an interesting item, something I've never used before and something that would be very handy uh, in this fight over here. So this voids empty, or I keep saying voids, vanity's emptiness. I don't know it, what that one is. Is that shown in here? If I search van complex brews, here we go. This might tell us what we're looking for. Uh, brew of the overlord, cross souls, feather feet, vanity's emptiness. This brew casts an aura of emptiness around any entity that has its effect in 128 block radius. Mods will not be allowed to spawn naturally. Oh, that's kind of cool. So I wonder if one of these does something like removes negative effects or something like that. Uh, brew that applies both positive and negative effects, taking it leaves the affected individual in a state of power, but also vulnerable. Huh, okay. Well, let me go ahead and go through these real quick, figure out if there's anything that would help us with that fight, and we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, well, I was looking at the different brews that we can make. And the only one that really stood out to me was the one that offers resistance to in an incense form. So that might be something we do the next time. The magical potion that we've been taking from uh, the magical crops mod does not give us resistance to. It does give us like fire resistance though, but I think resistance to is just straight up damage resistance, which is something we probably want for a fight like that. Although we've been getting wither and I'm not sure if all the damage we've been taking is just from wither damage or... If resistance to really would help us out. But either way, I think we're going to put this aside for now until the next time we decide to fight the Guardian of Gaia, which looks like we might be doing sometime soon. <laughs> we can barely get through the first fight. I don't know how we're going to do the second fight, but I guess if we do enough buffs, we'll get there. But anyway, I wanted to look at this quest right here. This is Archer's Memento. And this says, brewing is all well and good, but sometimes you wish you could just keep the effects permanently applied while on the move. You think you might be able to develop a pendant to do just that. That sounds pretty awesome. Uh, the Tainted Blood Pendant seems to act as a simple vessel to store a sample of potion in, but is in fact capable of channeling mana into it to directly replenish the potion while constantly applying its effects to any who wear it. And a plane was just flying overhead, so I paused there for a second. Uh, you can infuse it with most effects that can be made in the brewery, barring a few such as instant health. I wonder if regeneration two can be made. So that'd be pretty awesome. Uh, simply by using it in place of the vial or flask, which would normally hold the potions. Okay. So tainted blood pendant, uh, gas tears some prismarine and a mana diamond. That's not so bad. I don't think we have any prismarine, but I think we can craft that through Britannia since it's not normally a part of Minecraft 1.7.10 that wasn't introduced until 1.8. Um, 
So the Prismarine, this stuff is made by putting nether quartz into the mana pool with the alchemy catalyst. So we need four of those. Let's go ahead and grab those real quick. And then we needed a mana diamond. Go and do both of those at the same time. I think a gas tier. Yeah, we have those in the system. So we should be okay. Let's go ahead and do one of those and four of those. Cool. So we should have everything we need to make this thing. Um, <laughs> blood pendant. Yeah, this is what we're looking for. So a tainted blood pendant. There it is. Cool. So we got that made, uh, equipable and amulet slot, not infused. So the amulet slot is where our TR is. Okay. So we'd have to get rid of flight in order to put that on there. Hmm. I'm not so sure if that is something I want to do or not. <laughs> uh, where's a Terra steel blade this thing. I think people are saying we could charge this thing up. Maybe I'm thinking something else. Is there something we can do with this? Oh yeah. Look at that. That's pretty cool. It's like we shoot a beam of mana. All right, I like that, but that's going to be using. Yeah, I assume that's going to be using mana from our greater ring of whatever of the mana. What is this thing? Greater band of mana. Anyway, let's go ahead. Um, let's look at the quest for this thing. Got distracted there, putting on the Terra Steel stuff. Okay, so that's all we need to do. And that's going to give us a Tainted Blood Pendant. That's brown. Is that resistance? Oh, that's haste. Well, okay, I guess, you know, haste wouldn't be that bad, but we obviously don't need haste at this point. Um, so that's just going to give us haste that replenishes every three seconds. Okay, yeah, if we wanted to break stuff faster or whatever, that'd be kind of cool. Uh, I don't know if there's a way you can remake those into a different version by rebrewing it or something. Hmm, I just don't know. But yeah, we might look at making like a resistance one or we might just use a resistance on the incense. I don't know what we're going to do just yet. So uh, one final one before we have to do the Guardian of Gaia fight is joining the Ivy League. So this says the attributes of the Ender Air and the Gaia Spirits may well be able to compel plants to work for you. In particular, Ivy seems readily seems to readily grow across any equipment you introduce to it, so why not try and use that to your advantage? By using the Gaia Spirit, you can more closely align the IV to the forces of mana, allowing it to feed mana into the equipment as it's attached to in order to repair it. Similar, similarly, <laughs> similarly to equipment made from mana-based materials. Uh, to apply it, craft the IV with the item and three of the item material which would be used to repair it in the anvil. Okay, so timeless IV. We need the Gaia Spirit, Binds, and Elementium Ingot. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. That'll give us a bunch in return. Timeless IV. Do it. Wait, what are we missing? Binds. We don't have any vines. How many more of the Spirit do we have? Seven? Okay, yeah, we got enough to do. I think we need four of those in order to make the upgraded version of the fight. And I'm not sure I want to do that just yet. Uh, we really don't have any vines. Okay, how about jungle saplings? Actually, you know what? We do have vines. Just grab a pair of shears real quick. And we will... Let's jump right over to the base. There it is. There's vines. Cool. Alright. So there we go. Vines here. Boom. Timeless ivy. Alright, so back to the quest book. Yeah, that's about time. We got it. That's going to give us three more timeless IV. So sometimes it helps rereading the descriptions of how things work. I've never used timeless IV before. And through that first read through, I was like, wait, what? What do we have to do? So apparently the way this works is if you make yourself, say, an iron pickaxe, you repair an iron pickaxe in an anvil with iron, right? Or another iron pickaxe, but iron, right? So the way this would work is say this is an iron pickaxe. You would put this in a crafting table with a timeless ivy and then three more iron, whatever you're using to repair it in the anvil. Yeah, and then that would apply the timeless ivy effect to your whatever item in this case. That would be the iron pickaxe. Um, so this stuff seems like it would be really, really cool that it would just constantly repair whatever it is that you have on. Similar to, I guess, how 
Uh, Moss works on Tinker's tools, but I don't really want to apply that to anything at the moment. Like our Terra Steel armor, yeah, it just uses mana to repair, right? All of our tools have Moss on it. So I don't really have anything in particular that I'd like to use the Timeless Ivy on. Now, I was looking online just a second ago to try and find out what would be a good use for that Timeless Ivy. And people are saying there's some talisman, I think, from Thomcraft. I believe that's the one that, like, uh, gets rid of the the warp effects. Talisman of something or other. I can't remember the name of it offhand. Anyway, like, that has so many uses. And people are saying that that talisman would get down to zero, like, durability. It'd use it again, then go all the way back up to full durability. So that sounds like something you'd probably want to use it on. I was looking through uh, the Thom and Nomicon a second ago to see if we had that. I was even looking uh, in NEI here. And we have some talismans, but I think... Yeah, that's talisman of nourishment. I don't think that would be what it was. Yeah, I don't think we have that mod installed, whatever it was that people were talking about. Or maybe it's some Thomcraft research that is not unlocked yet. I don't know. Anyway... Uh, so going back to our quest book, it looks like we pretty much have knocked everything out of this section Except for round two and since we can't really do round one too well I don't think I want to do this yet. So maybe what I'm gonna do now uh, Let's set up a few more instant sticks. Uh, I'm gonna try and get all the different things we want like regeneration two. Yep uh, I'm gonna want resistance too, and I might try and figure out a few more other incense potions that we can put around uh, I'm going to go and brew those up real quick, see what we can come up with, and then we'll try the Guardian of Gaia fight once again, and hopefully it'll be a lot easier with those extra potion effect buffs. All right, guys. Well, I just died again. Yeah, I was flying up in the air, and I forgot that the, uh, the flight that we have right now, we can't just hover. <laughs> so anyway, I was up high enough where I was going to kill myself, I fell, and I killed myself by falling. I just kind of like afk for a second, wasn't looking at the screen. Uh, but as it turns out, yep, that same thing happened again. I duplicated one of these bands. Not intentional. Not intentional. So anyway, we'll go ahead and get rid of those. I'll just stick it in here. I'll probably just throw it away later. It's not like I need that. We have plenty of mana generation over here. But yeah, that is some kind of a bug that's in this, either with the gravestones or something, that when you die... And it duplicates one of your rings. Hmm. I don't know. Really weird. So anyway, I made a brew of fortitude, a brew of revitalization, and a brew of vigor. Strength 2. So I think that should be pretty good. We're also going to do one of these potions. Uh, these probably give us strength 2. Yeah, they give us strength 2 as well. I think I'm just going to go ahead and use these anyway. It's not a big deal. Uh, so that gives us regeneration 1. This is going to override and give us regeneration 2. Uh, strength 2, and then Resistance 2, which this one doesn't give. Uh, so Healing Potion is probably something else we're going to want. I was also considering that we should probably make uh, more Heart Canisters. So I did that. I made a yellow one, and I made a red one. Or no, I made a yellow one. I was going to make another red one to make another yellow one. But we don't have any red hearts yet. We haven't really been fighting any monsters at all. We started on that island over here, right? We started out on that island. And we lit everything up so we never really had to deal with monsters. And then we built this base over here and I've lit everything up. And yeah, we still haven't had to deal with any monsters. So I believe the red hearts, these things only drop at like a very low percent chance when you kill a monster. I think fortune might increase that chance. I'm not 100% sure. But since we don't have those, yeah, we can't get the red heart containers, the canisters or whatever. Uh, these yellow ones, if we spawn in the wither boss and kill it a few times... Yeah, we should be able to do that, and we can make the green ones by taking a yellow and wrapping that with Terra Steel. So I think that would probably be our best bet for, like, survivability during this fight, I think. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and drink this potion. Uh, we're going to try this once again. I'm not going to do any additional mending, although I probably should. I'm just going to assume that the Regeneration 2 effect that we're going to be getting will be enough, and the Resistance, I hope. I don't know. Uh, let's go ahead and sit them. I don't know, about right here. They're not a big deal to brew. Something like that. One of those, one of these, and one of those. Cool. Then we'll go and light those up. Boop. Oh, left click. Right click, left click. There we go. Okay, so I have strength three, apparently. That's a thing. I didn't know it'd give us another one. Uh, regeneration one is not being overridden. So that is something I wasn't aware of. 
Um, okay, we do have the resistance too. So maybe taking this potion wasn't the best thing. The, the one that gave us regeneration one. I was hoping this would overwrite that, but I guess not. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and try this once again. If we die, we die. Whatever. It'll happen. There we go. We got him. All right. Well, that's the second win. Um, it was still kind of sketchy. Oh, we got a mysterious map. Number two. Right, click me to start a treasure hunt. Don't mind if I do. Uh, there seems to be a map showing a location of some sort of treasure. You note it down in your quest book. Seems to be pointing somewhere around negative 930, 1750. Where are we at right now? Eh, that's kind of in the opposite direction from zero <laughs> than what we are right now. Oh, uh, anyway, we might take a look at that some other time. And then we got the torn page from witchery. We did get another yellow heart, so we can make another yellow heart canister, which is pretty awesome. So we did survive that fight. Very happy about that. We got eat more guys spirits. I don't know if I really want to fight the second tier guys. Ah, uh, that fight really, really is kind of crazy. All right, guys, I'm feeling more confident about this. I think we're going to do it. So it wants us to make the guy spirit and get to fight the tier two version of that boss. We're going to go and do that. So I took those two hearts, by the way. Uh, it turns out, I forgot about this. If you put a yellow heart in your crafting grid, it turns into a red heart. So we never actually have to fight monsters to collect those. We can just fight the boss enemies like uh, the Guardian of Gaia or the Wither Boss. Either way, yeah, and we can collect the yellow hearts and make the red hearts. So now we have three red hearts, <laughs> one yellow and two green still. Okay, so I just got done brewing up some flasks of mending. This is making the uh, the vials or whatever, except out of elf glass. And this way we get six charges per, so we have a lot of... Yeah, we have a lot of uses on this. So I want to get over there and try and fight this one more time while we still have time on the clock uh, for the potions. We still got 13 more minutes. Let's go ahead and try this. Uh, we'll do the tier two fight. Hopefully it does not end poorly. I'm keeping a lot of these flasks on the bar. <laughs> I don't know if we need that many, but I want to have those available just in case. Let's do it. All right, get him. Whoops, stay out of the stuff. Okay, we are. Yeah, we gotta make sure that we take health every time we can. Hit him as much as we can, do it. Whoop, get out of there, get out of there. Oh, heal, heal, heal. Oof, okay. Okay, so these sparkly things are being shot at us, which, oh, no, 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 come on. Ah! I was going to say, those sparkly things are being shot at us, which is doing direct damage. But even with those buffs, we probably could have survived it if I was paying closer attention to the fight and not, uh, you know, trying to talk while I'm doing it. Uh, well, anyway, we did okay, I guess. I need to go back there and collect my things. Uh, that fight definitely is significantly harder, and I believe there is... Uh, like three phases you know how like the first fight has that phase two where he goes up in the air and he drops the mobs i think that happens twice during this particular fight anyway we weren't successful i'll probably try this a little bit off camera i'll probably do the other fight uh the first one so we get more of the guardian spirits guardian of gaia spirit things uh because you need that in order to craft up oh hi hi how you doing um you gotta burn you're dead. <laughs> we have the graves do that every now and then. Yeah, uh, so we need to collect the, the Gaia Spirit in order to make that second tier thing. I don't know if it's necessary to actually fight that boss. I don't think there's a quest that requires us. Or maybe there is. No, there is. So we do have to actually defeat that boss and get this Dice of Fate, which is a drop that the boss will give you when you do the harder version, which will give you one of the random things from Batania, one of the random artifacts. Yeah, let's go ahead and put our armor back on. I'm not feeling so safe, and I'd like to get some flight going as well. Do we duplicate our ring again? Greater ring of magnetization, man, band of mana. No, it doesn't look like it duplicated that time. So I don't know what causes that. That is like a weird thing that happens every now and then. Cool. Well, anyway, guys, let me go ahead and put my title scroll back on because that's super important to have our little ender dragon buddy. 
But anyway, guys, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.